All right, here's a quick one for you guys that have never cleaned up transferring a cylinder with acid. So if we look at this cylinder, this is a uh, 55 Husky 46 mil open port. So you got a fair amount of transfer. Now, I don't know exactly the story on this saw. Uh, it's going to be built for a buddy of mine. And this uh, came to him uh, from a neighbor of his, and it was, oh, I, it's got all kinds of compression, but it won't run. Well, it didn't have any spark. But that all kinds of compression, yeah, that's 30 pounds. We'll have a look at the piston here. Clearly, she's toast. Might be able to salvage this enough to make this run with this cylinder for a baseline, because we're not going to use this cylinder on this build. I'm trying to find a partner 5500 plus cylinder for it. Because our plan with this saw is we want this saw to run comparable to my Muffer Modded 254. That, as far as I know, that's all my dad did to the saw. I've never had it apart, and I'm not taking it apart until I need to. So, I know a lot of guys so see cleaning cylinder transfer with acid, and they're, oh, well, is the acid going to hurt the cylinder? Or, they're scared to work with the acid. Well, I come from a snowmobile, small engine background. Cleaning cylinders with acid is almost an everyday thing in the winter. Of course, usually have a nice clean shop, which I do have, but I don't have it sink out here. So usually with a snowmobile cylinder, we'll actually just put the cylinder in the sink, have some running water, and pour the acid right on. But because I don't have running water out here, we're going to go ahead and use a Q-tip. Let's see if I can get enough light in here so you can see what's going on. Uh, maybe... Not really. Okay, there we can kind of see. You can see the transfer in the bottom of the cylinder there. I think you got a pretty good shot of it before. So all we've got is acid on a Q-tip. So we're going to just apply it to the transfer. And it'll bubble up and turn white. Just the same as hydrogen peroxide does when you put it on a cut. And you can see it there. See, it's just bubbling away. It's doing its thing. And we'll just let it sit a little bit, and then we'll wipe it a little more with the Q-tip here. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's bubbling away. Let's see, there's our new one coming off on the Q-tip. Still doing its thing there. We'll go a little bit over, a little bit more than that. We'll try and get as much as we can. There's a little bit of scuffing everywhere above the port too. Like I don't think that this jug is going to be salvageable to be an everyday runner, but I would like to be able to have a decent baseline for this saw and I don't have another one around. So if we can make it run with this cylinder, we'll try it. But I don't know if it's going to clean up enough. And I'm definitely not getting a new piston, so well, if we can free up the ring on that one, we're going to run her as is. And it's a two-stroke. They are forgiving when it comes to that. They may not run as good, but they will run. See? It's still doing its thing. Just... Yeah, the cylinder's pretty scored, so it's going to be marginal at best. I'm thinking I probably can make it run again. I can probably make it have, I'm thinking I'll probably be able to get 120 pounds of compression out of it at best, because it's not pretty. She scored up pretty good. So Probably can make it run. And that's pretty much it. Now we're just going to flush it out with some clean water and Bob's your uncle. Of course, we didn't get it all in the first try, but let's give it a wipe down and see if you can see the difference. Yeah. You can see she's she scored pretty good in there. But you can see we made that transfer quite a bit smaller. 
Doesn't look like we're through the plating, so that part may still come clean. There are some gouges in there above the port, which are going to be a problem. But we're going to do what we can. I don't think that this is going to be a... Uh, no, it's not going to be something that I'd put together and sell to someone. I'd probably run this on my own saw, knowing that, yeah, it's going to die. But not for something that's going out the door to someone else. I'll just add this to a collection of cylinders that are kind of good, but not really. I've got a whole bunch of those for 266 Huskies. Because I seem to acquire a lot of those ones. Okay, I think currently I've got nine. As you can see here, still bubbling away. And only on where the transfer is, you can see the plating's not being touched at all. on here we'll just let it sit a little so for those of you not familiar this is muriatic acid so a lot of places will actually sell it as like a drain cleaner I think where they say etching, cleaning, descaling. Most hardware stores have it, but usually it's kind of hiding in the back somewhere. I've had this particular jug for uh, two and a half years now. I don't know how many cylinders I've cleaned up. and I don't think I've actually used any appreciable amount. Because when you're taking a Q-tip at a time out of it, it lasts a long time. Like the last snowmobile shop I worked at, I think the jug we had was 10 years old. It was still half full. <clears throat> yeah. This one's going to... I think I've got most of what's going to come off now. and The rest we're just going to get out the old emery cloth and clean her up as best we can. So, as you can see here... Still, it, the acid's still doing its thing. A little bit of smoke coming up there as it's chewing away on that aluminum transfer. And lots of bubbling going on too. There we go. Bubbling away, cleaning it up, but as you can see, it's not touching the coating at all. Just the transfer. So where you have to be careful with this is where you have your edges of your ports where you have exposed aluminum. Because if you leave it too long, it will damage the cylinder. But you're going to notice right away that it's doing something there. So generally, unless you're not paying attention, you're not going to hurt the rest of your cylinder. And also, if it eats the aluminum through the scratches in the cylinder, the cylinder wasn't savable in the first place because there was no transfer. And there was no coating left in that area. So, here we go. Yeah, it's quite a bit cleaner than it was. Where we're at now, we'll be able to just clean up what's in memory cloth. So, let's get that out and see what we can do. Alright, so here's our fancy contraption for memory cloth and cylinder. This works great. Just yeah, cut a slit and a piece of rod, stick the memory cloth in there, and go to town. Again, just, you know, you're not trying to hone out this cylinder, you just want to clean it up. So, you know, you're not expecting to try and spend 15 minutes going back and forth cleaning this sucker up. You just want to knock the aluminum off and maybe make a nice finish for the ring to seat on. So, low speed on the drill. Let it get So, 
think we're not quite done here, but see, most of our transfer is gone. This cylinder definitely goes into the category of not being great anymore, but I think it'll clean up enough that it'll be a runner. Again, I wouldn't let this one go out the door, but I would run it on my own junk. Because I have enough saws that if it stops working when I'm in the middle of doing something, oh well, I'll just grab one of the other three or four I've got with me. we go clearly it cleaned up pretty decent but there are some scratches if you can see them there trying to get the light aimed the right way that are above our port they will affect compression the stuff below the port not the end of the world we definitely have a few scratches that are uh, let's see if they're high or low We have a few spots here that we still have a little bit of transfer. So, a little bit more acid. Let's try her again. Nice new Q-tip. See what we got. It's really doing its thing now. Most of that stuff is still proud of the lining, so that is transfer still. But there definitely are a few grooves that are not going to go away. I think that's about as good as this one's going to get. It's got a pretty decent looking cross hatch now from the emery cloth. So that's, that's the rough surface we need to see the rings. You can see there's still a few marks in there, but this cylinder will definitely run. If this was a rare cylinder, you know, for a saw that you just can't get parts for, this one is savable. Absolutely, this will run. There's no question about it. Let's get it good and clean up here so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. So, no questions asked. This is a usable cylinder. Not everyone's going to be comfortable using the cylinder. It still has a few marks in it. That's up to you. But like I said, if this was a saw that you can get another cylinder for, this is perfectly usable. It's been saved. And it's definitely going to be good enough to run this saw, get the baseline I'm after, just so we can compare and actually have some scientific proof that we gained. Although, we're not going to use that cylinder for a build. Because I want to do it closed for it. And ideally, like I said, Partner 5500 plus if I can find it, maybe a 5000 plus because I think even the 50cc platform we can work with. Because I know the closed port OEM cylinders are not easy to find out. So, piston, this isn't going to be too bad to deal with. So let's get it off of there. Let's see what we can do. Back 
saw. Yes, I use nest wrench a lot when I'm working on saws. I'm bad for building stills with only an S wrench and a T handle torques. Because for the most part, with a still, that's really all you need. Alrighty, let's get the saw out of our way and let's get this ring freed up. So I'm just going to work it. See if we can get it out of here without breaking it. So we're going to clinch just right there. I don't know if you can see it, but we just got a small pinch. So, let's see what we can do with it. Get out the ultra. Do a little bit of trimming. Well, unfortunately our ring didn't survive, but the piston, it ain't pretty, but I'll guarantee you it's usable. The conditions, you know, you don't have, it's okay. Definitely shows signs, four corner cold seas, but that wasn't our cause of death. This, judging by the look of this cylinder, this is not a lean burn down because the edge of the piston is fine. So this is bad fuel or not enough mix. But as you can tell, this saw has had a hard life. Even though it's a nice clean saw, it wasn't well taken care of. Like, look at the cylinder. It's clean. The outside is clean. This saw hasn't done much work. But this is why you always want to pull the muffler off of a saw. Even if it has good compression, it may look like this inside. It's not long ago I took apart an 026. Well, the crankcase is actually still on the bench. Unfortunately, I lost the rest of the saw in a shop fire, but that's a whole different story. It still had 150 pounds of compression, but the intake skirt on the piston was razor sharp thin, and it, the piston was actually rocking at top dead center and touching the cylinder because the piston was so worn out. There's a lot of stuff can hide in a good running saw. So, always pull your muffler. Unless, like me, you're picking saws up for, you know, five for ten bucks. Then, eh, it is what it is. I'm not going to get too worried about what the cylinder looks like when I'm paying five bucks a saw, or two dollars a saw. Because I can afford to spend some money on it to make it run good even if I do have to put a top end on, or a crank, or bearings, but I do a lot of stuff myself. So, like I said, our plan with this saw is we want to make it run like a 254. I wanted to do a test run with this cylinder, but unfortunately I broke that ring, and the only thing that I have close is a 44.7 mil still, and it just doesn't have quite enough tension on the cylinder. I don't think it's going to make much cylinder compression. It does fit on the piston, but it's pretty loose in the cylinder. So I don't think we're going to be able to run this as is. So next video of this saw, uh, we will have a different cylinder for it, and we'll be doing some porting and then putting it together.